स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello everyone this is Dr Vishal Tivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing we were discussing about the biomolecules and uh, the understanding of the biomolecule is very important for us to understand for us to realize the uh, the importance of these biomolecules in running the several types of cellular activities so so far what we have discussed we have discussed about the Uh, nucleic acids so in that we have discussed about the dna and rna and these two molecules are important for the information to be stored in from the one generation to another generation and that's how they are actually going to relay the information from the one generation to the next generations and subsequent to that we were also discussing about the carbohydrates and carbohydrates are mainly been required for energy production and as well as in some cases they are also been part of the um, building blocks where they are actually modifying the some of the crucial cellular factors and other things so uh, in if you recall in our previous lecture we discussed about the different types of carbohydrates we discussed about the monosaccharides disaccharides and polysaccharides in addition we have also discussed about the different types of uh, structural as well as the biochemical details of uh, these different types of uh, carbohydrates and uh, uh, the carbohydrates are present in the linear chain or to the cyclized form uh, and they are also showing the different types of isomeric properties so with this brief discussion in the previous lecture in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the how the carbohydrates are participating into the energy productions so, so what we have discussed so far we have discussed about the uh, the different steps of the metabolic reactions what is happening into the glycolysis what is the energy production within the glycolysis and under the different uh, environmental conditions how the energy production is going to be modulated and in addition to that we have also discussed about the regulation of the glycolysis by the different means either it will be by the entry of the glucose into the cell by the mean of the uh, insulin hormone or by the covalent as well as the allosteric regulations of the different enzyme what is present into the glycolysis once the uh, after the glycolysis so from the glucose once glucose is going to be utilized and it is going to be produce the pyruvate this pyruvate is actually going to enter into the krebs cycle and the krebs cycle is only be present into the eukaryotic cell it is not present in the prokaryotic cell so let's understand the next cycle which is called as the krebs cycle so krebs cycle the the krebs cycle is named after the uh, scientist who discovered the krebs cycle right and the krebs cycle is discovered by the professor hans krebs and it has the all sugar intermediate with the three carbon so that's why this is also called as the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the tca cycle so the krebs cycle is also called as the tca cycle and it is been discovered by the scientist hans krebs it is also known as the tricarboxylic acid cycle or the citric acid cycle uh, 
In higher eukaryotes, the Krebs cycle operates inside the mitochondrial stroma with the different types of enzyme. In the presence of the oxygen, the pyruvate formed during the glycolysis enters into the Krebs cycle for the further oxidation to produce the energy. So, what you see here is the different types of reactions, what is happening into the Krebs cycle. So, this pyruvate, what you are going to see is it is actually going to be produced from the after the glycolysis. So, once the pyruvate is going to be produced, it is going to be sent to the Krebs cycle to into the Krebs cycle. So, it will enter into the Krebs cycle by the pyruvate will enter first the pyruvate will enter into the mitochondria and the within when it will enter into the mitochondria, it is actually going to be get converted into the acetyl CoA and the enzyme is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is a multimeric uh, protein enzyme complex where we have the different types of enzyme and it is actually going to utilize the coenzyme A to produce the acetyl CoA and this is a dehydration reactions and what you see here is the first molecule of NADH is going to be produced in these reactions. Well, as soon as the acetyl CoA is actually going to be produced, it is actually going to combine with the oxaloacetate to produce the citrate and the enzyme name is citrate synthase. So, this is the first reaction and this is the second reaction. Now, once the citrate synthase is actually going to produce uh, the citrate, the citrate is actually going to be utilized by the aconitase to produce the cis aconitase and the cis aconitase is going to be further modified into the isocitrate. So, uh, and the enzyme is uh, aconitase. So, uh, so by cis, uh, so the, uh, so in the second or third reactions, the citrate is going to be get converted into the isocitrate. Now, isocitrate is uh, going to be utilized by the enzyme which is called as the isocitrate dehydrogenase and in this process again the another molecule of NADH is going to be produced. So, this is the second NADH molecule which is going to be produced. The first NADH molecule is going to be produced when the pyruvate is getting converted into the acetyl CoA and the second molecule of NADH is going to be produced when the isocitrate is getting converted into the oxalosuccinate. Now, oxalosuccinate is actually going to go for the decarboxylation reactions and that is how it is actually going to produce the alpha ketoglutarate by the enzyme which is called as the isocytate dehydrogenase. Uh, now, once the, so there will be a production of carbon dioxide in this process, right? And once the alpha ketoglutarate is being produced, it is going to be get converted into the succinyl CoA and the succinyl uh, in this process again the NADH is uh, going to be generated. So, this is the third NADH molecule what is going to be generated uh, and the enzyme name is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and again the another uh, molecule of carbon dioxide is going to be produced. So, this is the first molecule of carbon dioxide, this is the second molecule of the carbon dioxide. Now, from the succinyl CoA, it is actually going to be utilized by the succinate thiokinase and the succinyl CoA is getting converted into the succinate and in this step, the one molecule of GTP is going to be produced. So, instead of ATP, it is actually going to produce the GTP. It GTP is actually having the similar or the identical amount of energy what is present into the ATP. Succinate is getting converted into the fumarate. The enzyme is succinate dehydrogenase and the one molecule of FADH2 is going to be produced. FADH2 is also going to be uh, oxidized into the electron transport chain, but the only difference from the NADH2 is that it, FADH2 oxidation is only going to produce the two molecule of ATP from the two molecule of ADP, which means it is only going to produce the two molecule of ATP instead of the three molecule of ATP in the presence of, in, in the case of NADPH. 
and then the fumarate is getting converted into the malate the enzyme name is fumarase and in this process again the one more, more molecule of nadh is going to be produced and this is the fourth nadh molecule what is being produced within the glycolysis and malate is again getting converted into the oxaloacetate and that's how it with the help of an enzyme which is called as the malate dehydrogenase again the oxaloacetate is going to take the acetyl coa uh, which is going to be produced from the pyruvate and that's how this cyclic reaction is going to be uh, run for the another round so what you see here is that we have the production of the NADH, we have the extensive production of NADH, we have the production of FADH2, we have the production of the GTP and then there is a uh, production of the carbon dioxide. So this carbon dioxide is actually going to be removed from the, uh, the Krebs cycle, right? And uh, uh, how many molecules of NADH? You see that one molecule of NADH second molecule, third molecule and fourth molecule. So we have the four molecule of NADH, we have the one molecule of FADHT, we have one molecule of GTP, right? And if you see the uh, pyruvate, so we are going to have the two molecule of pyruvate. So that's how if you see the all the these molecules are actually going to be in the double the amount what is going to be produced. So let's see what is the uh, ATP balance sheet of the Krebs cycle because ultimately that is what we are going, we are discussing here, right? How the, the ATP energy is being produced from the carbohydrates. So ATP uh, balance sheet, what you see from the Krebs cycle is very simple. Uh, there is no uh, consumption of any type of energy. Like you, you remember that in the glycolysis, we are utilizing the two molecules of ATP and then only there is a production of eight molecules of, uh, you know, a net production of eight molecules of ATP. Here, there's no such uh, uh, investment, right? So what you see is the steps of Krebs cycle. So when there is a first step, when there will be a production of acetyl-CoA, it is actually going to give you the one molecule of NADH, right? And remember that if the NADH is going to be utilized into the electron transport chain, it is actually going to give you the three ATP molecule. And that's why we have put the three into one molecule, right? So three ATP molecule is going to be produced in the production of acetyl CoA. Then in the step three, there will be a generation of alpha glutarate And in that step also, there will be a production of NADH. And that also is going to give you the three molecule of ATP. And then in the step four, there will be a generation of succinyl CoA. And in this step also, there will be a production of NADH. And that also is going to give you the three molecule of ATP. Then the step five, there will be a generation of GTP. And as I said, GTP is actually going to have the same amount of energy what it has been found for the ATP. And that's how the one molecule of ATP is being formed. Then in the step six, there will be a generation of fumarate and the gen there will be a generation of FADH2. So that is also going to give you the two molecule of ATP because FADH2, when it goes for the electron transport chain, it is going to give you the two molecule of ATP. Then in the step eight, there will be a generation of oxaloacetate and that also is actually going to give you the another molecule of NADH and that's how it is actually going to produce the three molecule of ATP. Now, what is the net balance for oxidation of the one molecule of pyruvate? So there will be a net production of three, 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 one, two, three, and that is the 15 ATP molecule. But since the glycolysis is producing the two molecule of pyruvate, it is actually going to be the total production. So total production is going to be the 30 molecule of ATP molecule which will be generated. So which means if you start with the one glucose molecule and if you consider that the there is an enormous amount of oxygen present, then it is actually going to give you the eight ATP molecule into the glycolysis and it is actually going to give you the 30 ATP molecule into the Krebs cycle. This means it is actually going to give you the 38 ATP molecule, the net 38 ATP molecule under the oxygen in the presence of oxygen. But if there is a no oxygen present, then it is actually going to give you the, so what will be the energy production? 
if there is no oxygen present then it is actually going to give you the two atp molecule into the glycolysis right and it is going to see here right if there is no uh, oxygen present then this is not going to work this is not going to work this is not going to work because there will be no electron transport chain which is going to be operational this is not going to work also and this is not going to work so in this case it is actually going to produce only the one atp molecule which means it is actually going to give you the two atp molecule from the glycolysis as well so that's why if there is a no in a o2 present then it is actually only going to give you the four atp molecule in fact if the atp is if the oxygen is not present then actually that is going to make the crepe cycle non operational because there is no going to be there will be no oxygen so there will be no running of crepe cycle and because of that it's only going to utilize the uh, glycolysis so there will be only two atp what is going to be produced if there is a no oxygen present that's why the amount of oxygen uh, is actually going to decide how these uh, cell uh, how the cells are actually going to modulate their uh, metabolism so if there will be no oxygen present then the the pyruvate is what is being produced from the glucose molecule will not enter into the crepe cycle right it will go and enter into the anaerobic oxidation where the cells are actually going to produce the lactic acid and they are actually going to produce the other derivatives of lactic acids uh, but apart from that the crepe cycle is we extensively been involved into the energy production if the oxygen is present and apart from that the crepe cycle is also been present in channelizing the different types of intermediates so let's see the significance or the uh, uh, the let's see the how we can be able to regulate the activities of the crepe cycle so that it is not going to uh, you know it's so that it all the reactions are under the proper control so there are four rate limiting steps in the crepe cycle and the point where it can be regulated okay uh, the step one is this when the there will be a conversion of pyruvate into the acetyl coa and what you see here is that these are the molecule which are going to be negatively regulated which means if there is a enhanced a very high amount of ATP, NADH, acetyl CoA, or fatty acid, then that is going to inhibit this particular step. Whereas, if there will be a very high quantity of ATP, NAD+, coenzyme A, fatty acid, or the uh, calcium, it is actually going to uh, amplify this particular reaction, or it is actually going to activate this particular reactions. So the first reaction is the conversion of pyruvate into the acetyl CoA is the first step which allows the entry of sugar moiety into the Krebs cycle. Pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is allosterically inhibited by the high ratio of the ADP to JDP or NADH to NAD plus and the acetyl CoA to acetyl CoA. See, this is because of this only, right? Because to require a very high, uh, uh, high uh, ratio of the this it is actually going to give you the inhibition of this which means there is a in very high quantity of energy what is already been present in the cell so if the energy is already present in the cell why there is a need to run the Krebs cycle so because of these molecules like ATP is a energy molecule and ADH is also a energy molecule it is actually going to inhibit the Krebs cycle. Then the second step is the first reaction of the Krebs cycle which is catalyzed by the citrate synthase and it is inhibited by the high level of NADH, ATP and succinyl CoA. So this is also the first step. This is the step also again which is going to be synthesized by the citrate synthase and that is also been re very regulated or the inhibited by the high level of these uh, NADH, ATP and succinyl CoA. Then the third step is the isocytate dehydrogenase, which is inhibited by the high level of ATP and ADH, whereas calcium and ADP stimulate this process. So this is the third step where the it is actually going to be again modified or can be modulated. Then the fourth step is the alpha ketoglutarate, which is inhibited by the succinyl CoA and the level, high level of NADL plus whereas the calcium stimulates this process. Now, 
the crepe cycle the crepe cycle is not only for produ producing the energy okay crepe cycle is one of the central metabolic pathway which are actually been responsible for see, see the crepe cycle is uh, connected to the style coa and style coa is also connected to the fatty acids and all other kinds of pathway so the intermediate what you see in the crepe cycle are very much uh, present in the many pathways what are present in the cell and that's why the crepe cycle is not only for the production of energy it is also being utilized for the many other functions so let's see what are these uh, functions and what is the uh, significance of the Krebs cycle within the uh, metabolism. So Krebs cycle is the master regulator of the metabolism. So Krebs cycle is a centrally connected to the metabolic intermediates of the carbohydrate, proteins and lipid metabolism. It has several branching points where it can communicate with the other protein or the lipid metabolism. So what you see here is that the protein the Krebs cycle and it is actually been shown that how what are the different intermediates which are actually been participating into the different types of other metabolic pathways. So what you see here is that the pyruvate it is being converted into the style CoA and then the style CoA when, when it enters into the TCA cycle it is actually producing the citrate. So citrate is actually being connected to the fatty acid and the esterol pathway. So that's how it can actually be able to communicate. So there will be a shuttling of the intermediates from the Krebs cycle to these pathways and exactly the same way the, the pathway, the intermediates could actually be shuttled back to the, uh, uh, into the citrate cycle also. Then once the citrate is getting converted into the alpha ketoglutarate, alpha ketoglutarate can directly be converted into the glutamate and the glutamate, which is the amino acid actually, uh, is can be shuttled back uh, and there are metabolic pathways so that the glutamate can be converted into the arginine, proline and glutamine which means at this stage it actually can easily be able to communicate with the protein synthesis machinery. So you see the catabolic pathway is interacting with the uh, anabolic pathways. And then we have the succinyl CoA. The succinyl CoA is the precursor of the porphyrin and the heme as well as the chlorophyll synthesis. So that's why it actually can shuttle the intermediates between the biosynthetic pathway of the heme biosynthesis. And once the succinyl CoA is getting converted into the malate, the malate is also getting shuttled between the with the pyruvate and the enzyme is the pyruvate carboxylase and as well as the malic enzyme. Whereas the oxaloacetate what is being produced is actually can be converted into the phosphoenol pyruvate or it is also can be converted into the another amino acid which is called as the aspartate or the other amino acids. And that's how and once it can converted into the aspartate or the other amino acid then that also can enter into the uh, pyrimidine or the pyrimidine pathway which means it also can enter into the nucleic acid uh, biosynthetic pathway. Uh, nucleic acid biosynthetic uh, pathway. So what you see here is that the Krebs cycle is, uh, is, is, a, is a catabolic pathway but it is actually uh, participating with the different types of metabolic pathways whether it is the fatty acid biosynthetic pathway, protein synthesis pathway, heme pathway or nucleic acid biosynthetic pathway or the it is also can uh, shuttle back to the phosphoenol pyruvate and phosphoenol pyruvate is a precursor for the glycine, serine and cysteine pathway. So that's why the uh, and if there is a requirement uh, uh, the Krebs cycle can also be able to produce the glucose which can be stored in the form of the glycogen in the uh, in the muscle cells. So, so what you see here is that the Krebs cycle has the very very huge quant uh, role in terms of the uh, regulating the different types of metabolic pathways and the intermediates actually can go into the different types of metabolic pathways. Like the lipid metabolism is connected to the Krebs cycle through the common intermediates such as the citrate and the style CoA. Similarly, the protein metabolism shares the intermediate as the alpha glutarate oxaloacetate. As a result, the Krebs cycle can aerosterically or the through the product inhibition regulates 
other metabolic pathways. In addition, it can redistribute the intermediates between the metallic pathway and health in the conversion of sugar to the protein lipid or the vice versa. And because of the such a very high level of uh, role in the metabolic pathways, the Krebs cycle is uh, been taking place very high in terms of the evolutions. So what is the role of the Krebs cycle in the evolution is that the Krebs cycle is directly associated with the running of electron transport chain and hence depending on the availability of the oxygen. Development of the Krebs cycle has evolved the organism to adopt the high oxygen environment which means earlier the people the like for example the prokaryotic cell they don't have the Krebs cycle. Be why they don't have the Krebs cycle because they are living in an environment where the oxygen availability is very low. So that's why they are only they are happy with the glycolysis pathway and they are only producing the very low amount of energy by the uh, glucose molecules. But with the with the development of the Krebs cycle and with the adaptation of the Krebs uh, the the mitochondria into the eukaryotic system, the the Krebs cycle has um, uh, is, has made the it is uh, made it possible for the organism to adopt for the high energy environment because in the high energy environment the Krebs cycle can be operated and it can actually be able to help the organism to produce the high energy high amount of energy. So with this uh, we would like to conclude our lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss more about the biomolecules. What we have discussed so far we have discussed about the carbohydrate structure and functions and we have also discussed how the carbohydrates are being utilized into the different types of metabolic pathways to produce the energy and uh, we have discussed about the glycolysis, we have discussed about the regulation of the glycolysis and subsequent to that we have also discussed about the trade cycle and its regulations and lastly we have also discussed about the significance of the Krebs cycle into the different types of metabolic pathways. So with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss about the some more biomolecules. Thank you.